The culture is actually We're not urinating on fire. You can stop asking that question. I'm going to be calling the defense. What I talk to Russell about is how you're games. Good day to you all. I hope the holiday season's been treating you well. Things might be a bit hectic considering all the shopping, seeing family, and the endless madness of the sports world. If you're a fan of the degenerate tickets for Atlanta, Carolina this past week were dirt cheap. Do you want to see football? The only way for me is to seek it, the sponsor of this video. The resale market can be a perilous place, but SeatGeek aggregates all tickets available to help you find the best value. You can sort through tickets from red to green on a 1 to 10 scale. You can highlight specific areas of the stadium you want to look, and even get a view from where you'll be sitting. All tickets are verified for authenticity, and after that you'll be sitting pretty at the game. Remember to use the code TREE in the link below to save 20 bucks off your first purchase. Year may be ending, but SeatGeek's importance in my life isn't. Now on to the video. I don't know, Jeff. We just didn't have a good game tonight. We didn't have it. Uh, it's just one of those games where nothing went right for us. You know, the worst thing happened to us tonight. So it's a reflection on all of us. This is just a really bad game in the NFL where nothing goes right, everything goes wrong, and, um, you know, it's the tough side of things. I know that what I've done here for three years, and I know what I put into this, and... You know, I know that we're capable of going. Uh, I know the type of coach that I am. I believe in myself. Um, but again, this isn't about me. This is about a, a group that's hurting in there. We got to get some rest and we got to get ready for Buffalo. Why do you still believe that guys still believe in you that you can go back in there and, and lead this yeah. team to whatever the rest of the season is? Yeah, you'll, you'll go talk to the guys after this and you'll, you'll be able to hear from them. Why should you be the coach if, that, if that's games, the games like this? Games like this happen in the NFL. To every coach that's ever coached in this league. You can look at any great coach that's ever coached in the league. Sometimes games like this happen. Sometimes there are games where it doesn't go right. None of it. And you got to put it behind you. You got to move on to the next thing. Oh, baby. Unbelievable. Jack Jones. They do it again. People thought Justin Herbert was the problem. Now you see how much he was carrying that shit franchise. Staley really should have been fired at halftime. After that horrific disaster, not only against a major rival, but a team that was shut out four days earlier. One that treated offense like plague, mind you, the Chargers had to pull a James Somerton and delete fucking everything. There was no way they could have kept Brandon Staley and Tom Telesco around after this. I'm not shocked at all they were thrown off the team plane mid-flight. I'm more surprised it didn't happen after... <clears throat> that... game? It's one thing to expect a bad coach to be terrible, but I thought Staley was going to be good. With how well he did with the Rams, he looked promising. The only thing revealed was that he was carried to relevance by Aaron Donald, the modern Mike McCoy. I called him a hack in January? Good lord, I might have been treating him with kitty gloves. Know how that is? A supposed defensive guru features defenses that are completely fucking terrible. Every year has gotten worse and worse, despite big acquisitions and incredible on-paper talent. Perhaps he should keep going for it, like his efforts to butcher game situations and appease his analytics master. He became a slave to numbers without understanding the context needed for success. You live by the analytical sword, it'll be the first thing to slay you. Telesco? He couldn't fill out the depth on a damn roster if his life depended on it. Surprise he lasted as long as he did, but Dean's never been known for making smart decisions, has he? This is what the Chargers are. A wannabe starlet that moves to L.A., dreams of becoming famous, yet is exposed as a fraud ten minutes after arriving. Hollow. Cosmetic. Irrelevant. A team with a handful of superstars surrounded by tent cities around the damn block. They're more than cooked. They're outright lost and might be facing the need for a deep overhaul of most of the roster. San Diego's lucky. They don't deserve to suffer through this failure of a franchise whatsoever. Word of advice, Brandon? You should have gone for the tie. Fuck you, Spanos. The Vikings are an experience. They cannot be described accurately without visual demonstration. If I were to simply regale you with tales of Minnesota madness, you would dismiss it as fiction. Have you heard the story of Nick Mullins? It's a messy one. Dobby the House Viking has been demoted to third stringer, yet the Vikings are running away with the matchup. Why they aren't? Nick Mullins. Boys and girls, Nick is a fan of what we call the fucking Chuck. Some of the absolute worst turnovers you will see from a quarterback. Seriously, dude, what the fuck is this shit? This kind of ineptitude gets you benched in middle school. Even his touchdown passes are the flukiest of bullshit. 
In spite of him, the Bengals are struggling to do anything against this sturdy Brian Flores defense, and the Vikings are out to a 14-point lead. But you, the viewer, should know that you never let your guard down when it comes to Minnesota. An outcome of theirs outside of one score is illegal in the modern game. The Vikings defense obliges this law and proceeds to break under the powers of Jake Browning and his many weapons. Cincinnati gets the crowd back into it with a touchdown. Nick Mullins guides his team right to a three and out. Their defense is exhausted and outgunned. Too bad, Minnesota, you're going to be victims of your own hex. There are no easy wins in Skullland, only more cardiac arrests. Yet they have to keep it interesting. The offense will push forward and continue the fascinating madness of Vikings football. Remember, Nick Mullins is a fan of the fucking Chuck. Even during touchdown drives when he throws dangerously across his body. Can the Vikings stop anything and hold this crucial lead? Are you kidding? They're bending into an infinite loop. Now all we need is some T. Higgins to emphasize it. Pressure throws it deep, and the ball is caught by T. Higgins at the one-yard line. That is a man that's going to get paid. And then some. Maybe even more during overtime. Here is where Minnesota has their masterpiece. They force Cincy to punt, but here's logic for you. Trust your running back Ty Chandler who's been gashing this defense all day? Nah, just run QB sneaks with Nick Mullins. Twice. They fail miserably. I'd say Nick Mullins was betting on the other team, but nah, he just sucks this much. Don't be shocked that the Bengals respond in kind because the Vikings lost their ability to play defense. Good going, boys. The AFC hates your guts. The snap's good, the hold is good, and the Bengals have come back to beat the Vikings in overtime. Minnesota, you fucking suck. It's not even worth it to mock you. Just get the fuck out of my sight. You blew it. Fish. The better team won here. The Steelers have repeatedly owned Indianapolis nearly every time they've played them over the past 50 years, but it wasn't today. They signed their death warrant. The splash plays in fluke bullshit came early, and by hook or crook, they've scored 13 straight. Indianapolis proceeded to score 30 unanswered. Every flaw about Pittsburgh and their fraudulence was laid bare for all to see. The Colts saw a dull, uninspired team and pounced on the opportunity. Torching a defense without inside linebackers or safeties. As DeMonte KZ became Mike Mitchell and Minka became a victim of injury. That's not even an excuse. The Colts were without a huge chunk of their offensive weapons. I called for Tomlin's head back in 2018, but I could always say that, you know, the players loved him and they played hard no matter what. Here, I saw a team that gave up. The whole roster's planning January vacations. And the result is Pittsburgh getting coached into a blender. Losing four or five against supposedly easy opponents. This is a collapse. The sooner I don't have to see Kiss and Titties be ass or Najee imitating Trent Richardson, the better. Know how bad it is? Mason Rudolph was taken out of the attic and dusted off. Pack it in, the season's over. Well done, Indy. You're that much closer to a playoff berth. May the hopium consume you whole. Detroit had been playing like absolute shit. Needing extra motivation to scare the men, Dan Campbell's bringing out the real gambits. If they keep failing, he will personally eat their firstborn children. Don't doubt him, he's a taste for blood. His thirst was more than enough to jolt the Lions back into their previous form. Scared for their lives, Detroit revved up the engines and dominated in all facets of the game. Denver was a team that was gunning for a playoff push and eager to make a statement of their own, but they became roadkill. This day belongs to the Motor City, and boy did they counter with a message of their own. For 60 minutes, the Lions sent Vance Joseph's defense back to September. Their real form has returned. And anyone who wants to move past them will have to fight for their very lives. At Ford Field, there was only massacre. Denver was annihilated in a game that may end up costing them a playoff berth of their own. That tends to happen when you can't stop Jameer Gibbs. He'll slit your throat and sprint to glory before you die. It's the playoff shuffle for you. Miami is the classic schoolyard bully. Find the pipsqueaks in the playground and pummel them for their lunch money. No Tyreek Hill for Miami, no problem. The Jets are absolutely destroyed in every conceivable formula. Their quote-unquote offense needs no explanation. Zach Wilson was sentenced to die by a Dolphins group seeking vengeance. The O-line merely a swinging gate seemingly pissed at him for not buying them Rolexes for Christmas. Their defense has been carrying for so long they just said fuck it and checked out. You know something? I don't blame them at all for quiet quitting. The Dolphins just walked in and smashed the rubble into a fine powder. That rubble had a Zach Wilson clinging onto life in it, so he's out for Trevor Simeon. 
tell me, is generating a hard-earned four yards at halftime against a defense that collapsed last week good? It's hard for me to tell. Not only buried alive, but covered in flesh-eating bacteria and left to be consumed by maggots. The only image burned in their heads as they erode to nothing is Steven Ross doing the waddle. Aaron Rodgers is gonna come back to this? You're fucking right. New York, you got your wish of a franchise quarterback. Too bad you wished it on a monkey spa. Toasty! Flash in the pan memes are some of my favorites. The Duck Hodgeses and Kyle Allens and Josh Dobbses and Mike motherfucking whites of the world show us all that anyone can play quarterback at the highest level. For a few weeks. Tommy DeVito was a legend for a fortnight, but reality slowly kicks off all soap in the ass. Like all failed dreams, it happened at the Superdome. The Saints shut down the Giants' running game and forced Tommy to try to beat them with his arm. He couldn't. New Orleans killed them off with efficiency and repetition. If there was a third down, they couldn't convert it. If there was a pass, it only averaged about three yards. And he momentum sacked seven times in the backfield and then knocked out briefly before halftime on a hard hit. Every Italian-American now cries into a platter of gabagool. There was another showing of Tyrod Taylor at minimum. The Saints are still a very flawed team, but they haven't had to do a ton these past few weeks. Just keep their head down and punish their easy opponents. Derek Carr at least looks solid and got them back to 500. Oh god, I just realized. There's a chance that two teams from Tank Division might make the playoffs this year. What a damning indictment of the NFC. The Chiefs, like their receivers' hands, are suspect as all hell, but we won't get a real gauge on them until January. To call their schedule soft to end the year would be an insult to Charmin. All Kansas City can do is take what's in front of them and smash it to pieces. Who knows, maybe they'll simply throw everything to Rasheed Rice. He's the only receiver that's somewhat dependable right now. As we got a rare Clyde Edwards-Hilaire sighting, it never felt like a contest. You say the Patriots are keeping it close at half, but they're no true threat. It's because any fumble they recover will be undone by a defensive holding penalty. When in doubt, remember Bailey Zappi has at least one really bad interception he throws a game. Hey, dude's gotta hit his quotas. Kansas City didn't even look to be world-beating. Hell, Kadarius Tony was talking shit about the refs for his obvious fuck-up last week, yet is repeatedly fucking the ball like it's his girl. The Chiefs don't deserve anything, but there's somehow a chance they end up with the number one seed. I swear to God, if that happens after all the shit they pulled this year... Rebuilding is a painful enterprise. The Packers may not be truly rebuilding, but the same principle applies. And only if they can manage to avoid the traps they fell into during the Aaron Rodgers era. No, the offense was far from the problem here. Jordan Love had himself a decent day. The real cancer is the terrorist overseeing the defense. Vanilla Joe Barry. All of Green Bay had a dollar for every time that defense gave up a second or third and long, everyone there would be a millionaire. All day long, the Buck steamrolled whatever pathetic deployments were sent to allegedly stop something. They allowed Baker Mayfield to morph into a generational talent for one day. Baker Mayfield. A guy who had been owned here the last two seasons is the first visiting player to put up a perfect QB rating at Lambeau. Over 450 yards of offense in a non-stop assault. That alone should have gotten Joe Barry fired two years ago, right? Perhaps they'll do something about it once they manage to stop a tumbleweed drifting in the wind. Or not give the Bucks a wide open opportunity at a playoff spot. Well, look at the time. It's why haven't you fired Joe Barry at a clock? <laughs> Just feel the excitement in the air for this pivotal tank division matchup. Tickets available for less than a Subway sandwich and still the fans are socially distancing themselves from the stadium. Pouring rain, two shitty football teams, one led by the New Age Dan Snyder. They should have honestly been paying people to come to this shit. There's nothing that makes my depraved heart swoon more than endless punting. It was entering true greatness. Until the Falcons ruined it with a long touchdown drive. This organization fucks up everything and I hate it with every fiber of my being. It's only 7-3, to three, but the Panthers are so useless that it feels like 28-3. If this were any other team, this game would long be over. But you forget that this is Atlanta, their QB is garbage, and their head coach probably has an intellectual disability. Implosions are to be expected. Oops, Bijan fumbled the football! That means Arthur's taking away his ball-carrying privileges. Carolina can't do much of anything with it, but they do kick a field goal. Now all Atlanta has to do is keep the ball safe as they move down the field and the game is all but won. 
Do you seriously expect the Panthers to score a touchdown? You underestimate Desmond Ritter's ability to be shit. Here comes Ritter. He was just able to get away from the pressure, but he throws a pick. Take it away by Xavier Woods. Taylor Heineke's got his flaws, but he sure as hell wasn't throwing that kind of puke. Using your best weapons on offense? Preparing for the elements. What are you, crazy? The defense is simply going to buckle and fall to shit on some of the most obvious ducks that Bryce Young can throw in these miserable conditions. Carolina's in field goal range. The Falcons are choking again. Jesus Christ, don't just fire Arthur Smith, throw him in the ocean with concrete shoes. We'll try to boot the Panthers to a win and deliver a huge blow to the playoff hopes of the Falcons and give Chris Tabor his first win as an NFL head coach, and he's done it. <laughs> you lost to the Panthers. <laughs> <laughs> this team fucking sucks. I had them winning the division. What the fuck is wrong with me? This team couldn't even beat a two-year-old in a game of Connect Four. What the fuck is going on? Jesus Christ. Who's ready for a defensive war of attrition? This is going to be trench warfare at its finest. And Cleveland has an opportunity to truly separate from the pack. Only their team wasn't ravaged by injury. Out down three tackles and featuring a defense of mostly backups, Joe Flacco will have to carry the load. As it has always been written in the NFL Book of Chaos. The issue is that he isn't. Joe Flacco is... well, Joe Flacco. Chicago's defense has really stiffened up over these past few weeks. And against third-string offensive linemen in some aspects, they're just teeing up on the old vet. Add to it that Justin Fields has that one play where he pulls the bullshit to social media's delight and you have the potential for an upending. Now only if Matt Eberflus wasn't a fucking moron and tried for a field goal before half instead of a Hail Mary. That'd be nice. The Browns are doing everything they can to stifle the Bears offense, but if they can't solve this defense, it's over. Chicago, thanks to channeling their 85 form, have a 10 point lead in the second half. But opportunities present themselves. Muffed punts by the Bears giving prime field position only for Flacco to fail to find his precious tight end for another interception. But the Browns are a feisty, relentless bunch even in their decrepit state. They'll make crucial stops nope. to stifle fields in the Bears' attack. They'll chip away at the rock and stone separating them from a lead. And they'll do it by finally breaking Chicago's sturdy defense. Joe Flacco's still got a bit of that old magic left in him. Spiral right into the hands of Amari Cooper as he races down the sidelines, gets them tied back up again. Cleveland's defense once again holds firm, and Flacco embraces his elite form. Never doubt his love of a nice tight end. David Njoku has been eating these past few weeks, and on this drive, it might be his magnum opus as a professional. Right into the kicking distance of Dustin Hopkins to take the lead for the first time today. The Bears need to act quickly. They get close to the promised land, but it's not enough. It's too late to get the field goal range. Chicago's going to need prayers answered. Chased by Garrett, flushed, looking, sets up, going deep. Hail Mary, end zone, deflected, hit and intercepted. Oh, Darnell Mooney. You had the win right in your grasp, yet the only thing you'll be holding is the bottom of the Cuyahoga. This could have been one of the greatest catches of all time. It would have been called the Hail Mooney. But we will only call for standard Bears misery. It's Cleveland-style brutality. And this loss might be the difference between bullshitting to a playoff spot and significant changes in the offseason. The Browns somehow escaped their own demise, all but secure a playoff spot and are 5-0 in games decided by three or less. Dear God, they really have become the Steelers. It's disturbing. <laughs> Houston got fucked over when the Titans were a franchise there non-stop, but to don their old Oilers unis against the Texans? That's a special kind of petty. To make things sting a bit more, CJ Stroud's out with a concussion. Houston's passing General Mills and going right to a homecoming. Case Keenum. Yes, the same undrafted sensation that came in for Matt Schaub a decade ago making his triumphant return. I think. Considering that it's 13 to nothing early on after a ghastly pick six, the Titans are giving Houston yet another fuck you in their long history. All right, boys, huddle up. Your team is dealing with a shitload of injury, your best receivers are out, and you're starting a veteran backup. All you can do is minimize your mistakes and try to coax points out of whatever you have left. 
The good news is that they are. No huge mistakes, and they are kicking field goals at the very least. The bad news is that they're going to need more than three-point increments in this adventure. Tennessee managed to get some semblance of offense going again, despite Derrick Henry having one of his worst performances as a Titan. A field goal has made this a seven-point affair. Case Keenum needs to pivot from his 2016 Rams days to his 2017 Vikings vintage. The miracles that man pulled off that year were the stuff of true legend. And he's doing the same in Nashville. Music to the ears of everyone back home. Even if the passes were incredibly dangerous and should have been picked. However, it's enough to bring the game back to a manageable state. A tie game. The only option is clear. Sudden death. Neither offense can manage to accomplish anything in this do-or-die situation. Suffocation the name of the game for both units, twice for the Titans. Further add to the sting, we'll have suffered a nasty injury on the final play of the drive. Sorry, Tennessee, you used up your magic last week. This time, it's Houston's chance to steal a win from the clutches of fate. You can stop them at any time, boys. Devin Singletary could get a touchdown, but we need to add to the drama with the holding penalty. Time is reaching zero. And Kaimi Fairbairn has everything depending on his leg. John Weeks, the snapper. Cam Johnston, the holder. Fairbairn's kick is good. And the Texans win it. My God, they did it. No C.J. Stroud, and they pull a rabbit out of their ass against all odds. Yes, it's only the Titans. I don't give a shit. This win gives their season a much-needed lifeline. We assume their power was gone, but they discovered some more reserves. It gives them the greatest pride. A middle finger to Bud Adams is gray. What to think of the Rams? They show flashes of their old glory. That cannot be denied, but how much of that is going up against shitty opponents? Are we supposed to get a proper gauge of their full potential with the commies on the docket? We couldn't stop the average armchair quarterback from getting 100 yards receiving. Don't allow anyone on that Washington secondary to become security guards, because all they do is allow anything and everything to get past them. Before you even look to blink, it's 20 to nothing and the game is all but over. So what do you do in the offseason if you're the commies? Rivera's gone, that's all but guaranteed, but what about Sam Howell? He's shown flashes, but he's either eating an endless shitload of sacks or trying to be DC's answer to famous Janus. Those turnovers, man. There's a big reason why he was benched for Jacoby Brissett. The Reeskins would try to mount a comeback with Jacoby, but it was too late. LA wins and is sitting pretty in a playoff spot. Just saying, Ron, it'd be awfully nice if you showed any urgency in the red zone instead of letting clock burn out. I know you're getting fired, but at least try, my dude. I wonder why this team is fucked. <laughs> Buffalo is facing yet another test in the gauntlet for their playoff lives. Dallas may have a lot of questions, especially on the road, but they're playing for a potential number one seed. There's no way they're just gonna lie down and die for the Bills. With everything in mind, they pass this exam with Hello flying there. colors. Not only did Buffalo succeed in front of the home crowd, they managed to do so with a minimal passing attack. I think we may have figured out a way to beat Dallas. Mull them in the trenches. When pushed repeatedly at the line, the Cowboys fell flat. It wasn't even due to Josh Allen for the most part. James Cooked. The bell cow and foil to Josh has finally broken out. Cook had over 220 all-purpose yards, most of them on the ground. The so-called batter defense of the Bills found the ability to repeatedly clamp down on the supposed elite Dallas attack. An excellent performance all around. And a much needed one to keep their quickly reviving playoff hopes no, no. juiced for the final stretch. The real Cowboys may be iffy on the road, but Buffalo is a soft schedule coming up. If all goes well, it'll lead to a final showdown with Miami for the division. Send a fruit basket to Kadarius Tony if it happens. Speaking of fruit baskets, Dallas, you'll get another chance at avenging or repeating January failures. This one isn't much of a shocker. Arizona has mostly been Arizona and will fall victim to teams that have their shit together. Guess who they played this week? Only the juggernaut of the conference. This was allegedly a Cardinals home game. All I'm seeing are Niners fans, and for good reason. The contest wasn't much of one. San Francisco did the usual San Francisco things. Do I really have to go over them all? It's a broken record. Purdy was efficient as hell. Christian McCaffrey had yet another premium day, making Carolina continue to eat shit, and the Cardinals' offense did little but shoot blanks. 
Remember when we thought the Niners were in some kind of trouble? That feels like ancient history at this point. Our concerns overturned with a six-game win streak and a guaranteed home playoff game by winning the NFC West. The number one seed is in sight now. But for Arizona, well, at least you tried. Jacksonville was panicking already, good lord, this matchup spiraled it all the way to DEFCON 1. Baltimore is a tough opponent in general, but with the way the Jags botched everything, it shows that they're suffering from the same damn problems that have plagued them all year. Where does it show the most? If you haven't been paying attention, it's the offense. Particularly red zone execution. Start with Brandon McManus making us all want Taco Bell. Then we apparently all got diarrhea from it, and McManus just shoulda kicked why. The defense is giving the Jags a chance to do something with a bad pass by Lamar. But T-Law got happy feet scrambling and dropped the ball like it was a New Year's Eve countdown. It's most unfortunate that the Ravens managed to unleash their full attack on the next drive as Jackson works his typical mastery of rush evasion. Easy touchdown to make it 10 to nothing. Jacksonville has an answer though. A deep pass to Zay Jones to get near the goal line. Time ticking down just before half. And they don't spike the ball? He threw a one-yard out route? This is the same shit that got Dougie P fired in Philly. That first half cost them the damn game. Of course, Baltimore would continue to pile on. With Duval's offense out of sorts, there was nothing they could do. A potential number one seed a few weeks ago has now fallen to three straight losses. And a three-way tie for the AFC South. The only saving grace is that they have a soft schedule to win the year, but concerns are rampant. Not in Baltimore, though. They have the world at their fingertips, and their greatest challenge is coming up. January's past can once again be avenged. The Battle of the Birds is now do or die for the Seahawks, and it's gonna get even more challenging for them. Geno Smith is active in name only. He's nowhere close to 100%. Drew Locke was awoken from slumber five minutes before game time and thrown onto the field in his robe and slippers. Did I mention he has to face the Eagles? If there's any good news for them, Matt Patricia is now calling the defenses. Philadelphia, I send my condolences. Not just for the horrors they'll experience on that end in the future, but because of their sluggish offense. We've been waiting all year for them to reach their full potential in that arena. We're still waiting. The unit has significantly stalled, the epitome of feast or famine in all aspects. People want to talk about banning the tush push? It's the most reliable thing the Eagles have right now. With their mercurial nature, the only fight they're showing is Kerfluffles imitating Drake Greenlaw on the sidelines. The fortunate thing is that they're playing the Seahawks in Drew Locke. Any other team worth their soul, even one starting Geno and it's a rout. I haven't gotten to the worst reality of all. Jalen Hurts has visibly regressed. Could be the flu he was dealing with all week, but last I checked, that didn't cause a man to chuck an arm pump with momentum on a first and ten. Brian Johnson, what the fuck are you doing? The passing attack isn't anywhere close to being in sync, yet they still control their own destiny in spite of it. Somehow, it's never enough. Four-point lead and a chance to finish off their prey? You think this is the 2022 team? Philly's offense can't do shit and fail to punish Pete Carroll's idiocy. How can this get worse for them? A 92-yard game-winning touchdown drive by Drew Locke of all quarterbacks? Come on, it's not like that's gonna happen. They're not just gonna lie down and die easily. Right, Eagles? Locke, end zone! It is caught! Touchdown, Seattle! Oh, shit. Eagles fans, may I proudly present to you the Matt Patricia defense. Featuring so much man coverage that you'll puke from the rainbow. Considering the Eagles have cornerbacks that have struggled in man this year, that's not a good formula. I know Patricia wasn't the major problem today, but that fruit solo, I have to pick it. Philly showcased their disaster of an offensive ethos and gifted Seattle the ultimate lifeline. With their pathetic schedule coming up, a home playoff game may once again be secure. But Philly is reeking of that 2020 Steelers stench. Just take your playoff breath and sit in the corner and shake. <laughs> Another tick of the clock has passed. And while several teams have secured tickets to the dance, there is so much more at stake in this final stretch. The 
first seed in the AFC is all but Baltimore's the game. Barring a sudden skid, they'll be getting a needed first round bye. Miami and Kansas City have a chance, but will need a lot of help for it to happen. The AFC East is still a contest, mostly because of Miami's chum. If the Dolphins lose these next two games and Buffalo wins them, it would set up a Week 18 clash for all the marbles. The AFC South is the next premier destination. With Jacksonville's recent slide, there's a three-way tie for the title. However, the Jags still control their own destiny in this regard. The Texans and Colts have roughly an even chance of claiming it for themselves. The wildcard situation is still murky. Cleveland's win has all but guaranteed them a slot, but there's still a four-way tie for two spots. Cincinnati's still rattling off wins, Indy and Houston are defying logic itself, and the Bills are coming in red hot. Pittsburgh and Denver are all but out due to recent defeats, but still have an outside chance. The NFC is San Francisco's to lose. They stand alone for the number one seed right now, with Dallas, Detroit, and Philly having outside chances at it. In spite of a three-game skid, Philly still controls their own destiny. If they and Dallas both went out, they will control the NFC East due to strength of schedule. The Cowboys are just hoping their rival keeps failing. The big scenario is tank division. Tampa Bay has the potential to run away with a spot due to a three-game win streak. New Orleans is hot on their tail, but currently lose tiebreaker. Atlanta just keeps choking, so they're on the outside. Like in the AFC, there's a four-way tie for two wildcard spots. Minnesota's in troubled waters, but still is the sixth seed. The LA Rams, after a Packers loss, now control the final spot. The Seahawks and Saints are also in the mix and are eager to steal a spot for their own. Behind them, Green Bay and Atlanta need a good bit of help now after their last two defeats. I wish you all good tidings and safe travels in this final week of 2023. Christmas season is hectic, but these holidays get more special with age. Enjoy your time with friends and family, cherish what you have in life, and do me one favor, please. Don't get Unit lost. 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 The bloodlust of the football gods will never be quenched. Amen. Mike Kevin's got Rashad White, but Chris Godwin's been fantastic. Third and four, and that pass is caught by Moore. First down and more. David Moore exploding to 